تقابلنا مع ساميا نكروما كريمة الزعيم الغاني كوامي نكروما وأحد مؤسسي أفريكا ماست يونايت أو يجب أن تتحد أفريقيا وهي مؤسسة غير هادفة للربح ومقرها غانا كانت ساميا نكروما ضيفة الشرف بحفل الاستقبال الذي أقامته وزارة الخارجية بمناسبة يوم إفريقيا You're the daughter of Pan-African leader Kwame Nkrumah and your mother was Egyptian. What would you tell us about Egypt-Ghana relations? It goes a very long way. You've and seen it all at home even. Indeed, yes, on a personal and political um, level. Uh, and indeed, um, immediately after our independence in 57, the vision our father had for the continent was liberation and unity. So immediately after our independence, Ghana together with Egypt, mm -hmm. where there was a strong friendship between President Gamal Abdel Nasser and our father Kwame Nkrumah, and not just friendship, but it was a friendship based on a shared vision. They both had the same objectives for their countries, but also for the continent. So together with Egypt, about eight countries came together and made the decision that we have to establish a body, a supranational body that will bring African nations together. The first duty or task was what? Liberation. So Egypt helped many countries together with Ghana in Africa gain independence. The second task was you, um, freedom to do what? Independence to do what? Huh? To unite, work together, integrate our economies so that we can deliver the basic needs to the people. And from eight countries to 32 countries to now we have 55 countries. But that vision remains very valid and relevant today because in 1963 when the founding fathers laid out the blueprint for unity when they said that you know we must have um, a common market we must integrate our economies we must have economic planning uh, at a continental level common currency a monetary zone and so forth central bank of issue all these things that europe europe went on to implement in the years that followed so it is something that has happened yes in another continent it has happened it has benefited countries so it can happen to us and benefit us too what did it look like living with a mother who's Egyptian? I understand that her English was not that good. She spoke French. She yes. was fluent in French and Arabic, of course, and a father who spoke English. And indeed. of course, his, the local language. Yes, indeed. Mother had to learn English in, I think, three months, she tells us. So she had to learn it very quickly. And I remember she would speak to us a little and I would say, what is this difficult language? But we learned it. Arabic. Yes, Arabic. And our father too would speak to us in um, our local language, the ethnic group where he came from. And I, I was thinking, I don't know which one is more difficult, but you know what? It is, I think, a great advantage to be exposed to two cultures, uh, two African cultures, I would say, the same continent and it's given us a, a very wide perspective uh, on issues and i i really think that we it is our duty those of us who've been touched you know by this this cooperation let's say between two different countries i think it's our historic it's duty. a dialogue <laughs> it's a dialogue thank you even better it is a dialogue indeed and i think those of us who've been touched, personally touched and inspired by that dialogue, I think it's our task and historic duty to make sure that we can promote uh, a better, continued better relations and greater things 
between not just Egypt and Ghana, but I think the whole of North Africa and Africa, what we call Africa south of the Sahara Desert. So what does Africa Day mean to you? It means the confirmation of a vision. Hmm? As we are saying um, in the whole, a vision that refuses to die. A vision that is relevant for all Africans today. You know, it does not make sense that intra-African trade or trade bit amongst African countries is only about 10% of our trade with the world. So it means we trade with the whole world more than what? Than we trade amongst ourselves. If you look at Europe, they trade about 70% amongst themselves. The same with other um, continents. So why? should Africa be left behind, you know? And how can we not make use of our vast resources to promote each other's economy? So I think the, the, the vision is relevant today. You know, they used to say that, oh, when the OAU, which is now the AU, of course, was founded in 1963, 54 years ago, they used to say, oh, but all these proposals, they are, ahead of their time hmm? it's too early so we are saying okay if 54 years was ahead of our time then now is what then the time is now the time has arrived for us to pick up those blueprints your father was one of the founders of the oeu uh, in cooperation with late president gamal abdel nasser and uh, several other leaders yes. and or the Accra Congress was held in Ghana in 1958 and this was kind of the first official attempt to unite Africa. What is the story of Africa must unite? Okay, yes indeed. Africa must unite. You know that our father ended up writing a book. Yes. Yes and he and I, I believe for him it was a book which he distributed to heads of state ahead of the conference and in it he laid out everything you know how Ghana became what it is the history of Ghana itself before moving to the unification his main thesis you know his what he thought is an African solution to African problems. African problems, exactly, yes. Are you continuing this legacy? We are promoting... You have a foundation called Africa Must Unite. Must Unite, yes. What we are concerned with, amongst other things, we do some social intervention projects in rural communities, but what I'm very much concerned with is to popularize the ideas that our father put on paper his writings, his books, because some were burnt after the overthrow of his government. But I believe some of the ideas, most of them, I dare say, of the ideas contained in those books, including Africa Must Unite, are very important for the youth of today, for the young people of today who are not aware of our history or so much about these developments of our history that the reason we became independent, uh, independence was not, a, was not an objective in itself. It was simply the means to improve the quality of lives of the people of Africa. So the, by understanding the, the true uh, mission or rationale or justification for getting our political independence, I believe young people will come to the realization that the next big step that we all must take collectively is how to gain ownership of our resources. So is this the mission? Our economic independence, yes. So the is this the mission of your foundation? To promote our father's ideas, yes. We want to do that and we are even beginning with also the Kwame Nkrumah Presidential Library, which I hope in the years to come, uh, with the help of my brothers, we can see how we can make it a reality. I believe we need a repository, you know, or a place where you can have everything on 
Kwame Nkrumah, everything by him and all the leaders who worked with him, who shared his vision uh, for the good of the people. So we, we want, I believe we have something that we can leave behind for the younger generation, something that would inspire them and something they can learn from and pick up, you know, from where we left and, and carry the mantle and just complete the task, a united, strong, dignified and united Africa, inshallah. Inshallah. You are the first woman in Ghana to chair a major political party. Yes, yes, to chair and lead. And lead. Uh, yes, you're right, uh, um, 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 a political party. That is true. Uh, yes, because, you know, we have very strong women in Ghana. Leadership at all levels, the judiciary, entrepreneurship, you name it. But as for politics, it's a very rough game. So many brilliant women don't want to, they don't want to enter active politics and be insulted and abused and people talking about their personal lives. So unfortunately, women's representation is still low in politics at the decision making level. I stepped down from the chairman because the leader of our, in our constitution, the leader of the party is and the chairman is different from the presidential candidates so you cannot be a, a, a chairman or leader and also presidential so i stepped down from the convention people's party it's uh, but we are also in talks with a few other party we hope we can somehow maybe present a united front for our next elections in 2020 sure. Why did you decide to run in the 2016 presidential elections? I, whatever I do, I want to promote our father's vision. For me, it's, um, it's uh, the ideas there are good for our nation. They are important and I know they can help a lot of people. So I want to promote the vision. Whatever I do, through active politics, I can promote Kwame Nkrumah's vision through the reprinting of his books, through promoting his ideas in different ways, politics and non-political activities, but they all fall into the same ball. That is, I believe he left us a legacy and if we don't promote it, who else will? I think it's our duty to do that. The Huffington Post wrote an article about you entitled the new Mandela is a woman. Okay. What would you say to this? Oh, okay, <laughs> okay. That, so I, 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 I must, I must guess or say that it must be a compliment. It, it must be a compliment. But I. What think, would you tell us about leadership? Yes, I, I keep on saying it every day. We need more women. We d we need more women at the leadership level. Our father used to say, if the degree of uh, political maturity, political maturity of the women is what decides whether a country is ready for genuine change and progress or not. So the more politicized your women are, the, the more you know that some good things are going to happen. Because women, they are, we, we say in English, on the ground, the grassroots. A woman goes to shop in the market, a woman takes a child to school, a woman does it. So she's in touch with the whole community strongly. So the way forward is to involve women in, in, in everything. And even in this uh, Pan-Africanism or idea of a united Africa, our women should embrace it, understand why it's important for us, for our children and grandchildren. And I know that the day the women embrace this call, I'm sure we will see greater progress. Now, I went to Ghana and I loved it. What? And what? I loved the material called Fatia, which is named after your mother. Yes, yes. What's the story actually? Because I, it's, it's beautiful, beautiful yes. colors. Yes, and actually the full name is Fatia Fata Nkrumah, which means 
Fatayat, they call our mother Fatia anyway. They don't Fatayat, it's difficult for people to pronounce. But Fatayat, Fatah and Kuma, or Fatayat. Deserves. Uh, not, Kuma? not deserves, like they suit each other. Okay, right. I, I think. So Fatayat, Tastahak, Nikroma? No, yani, they go together. They. they, they Layah, uh, yes. Layah, yes. Yes, Layah, Layah, exactly. But hey, Alain, it's so, beautiful, and yes, and and you know, it's our hand woven can take cloth, beautiful hand woven cloth. It's like silk, you know, like how you 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 weave silk. So it's the same, a similar process. And when they got married, you know, in as a way of celebrating our mother the the um Birthday they or? named no i mean celebrate her as okay. a person okay you know so they named a certain pattern or design because it's all different patterns they named that pattern after uh, our mother so it's yes you uh, said it very well in arabic yes like in alabad like in alabad so how is your Arabic then? I understand that you have a bachelor's in uh, my Arabic, Arabic studies from London University. <laughs> yes, my Arabic used to be very good. <laughs> what happened? It's been, oh, it's been decades. You've been yes. living away from Egypt for so yes, long? Yes. What message would you convey to African women? That African women must lead, must lead the campaign to unite our continents. Because when women embrace something, adopt it, they run with it. I think the great hope for progress and unity if African women all over from Egypt to Ghana to South Africa to Morocco to everywhere, if women embrace this call, I think we'll all be happy. At the end.